Welcome to Basic PowerShell. My name is Robert McMillan, and we've got a series of PowerShell videos that I'm going to introduce, starting with this one. So we've got PowerShell open right now. Let's talk about what PowerShell is, and then we're going to go through all the different most common commands and how to actually manage PowerShell. So as you can see, we have PowerShell open right now, but what I want to do is I want to make the font larger so I can uh, make it easier for you to see. So I'm going to click in the top left icon, go to Properties, and from here I'm going to go to Font. And I can go ahead and increase that to 20, and that makes that a lot easier to see. And I can go ahead and move that over and fill up the screen, or I can just click the center box, which does it for me automatically. So what is PowerShell? Well, the definition of PowerShell, it's the shell framework developed by Microsoft for automating repetitive jobs. What we would do before this is we would do what's called command prompt. So if I go ahead and choose run and I type CMD, I get a command prompt. And from here, I could type individual commands. Problem with that is, what if I want to type one command that does many different tasks? Or what if I want to remote into another computer to run tasks off that? Well, uh, the standard command prompt just isn't good enough to do all those different things. So Microsoft came up with the PowerShell commandlet. So the commandlet does many different things all at once, as well as it can do it remotely on another server where you have administration access. Some commands are fairly easy that you can type in while other commands are fairly complex. Let's go ahead and put in the command for looking at what version of PowerShell we're on. We'll go ahead and hit enter and we can see that's a fairly complex command just to look at what the version is. First we see the commandlet itself called PowerShell. Then we have the, what's called the switch. We see the uh, hyphen here, the word command, and then the get variable information in quotes. Most commands start with either a get, or a set, or an add. So let's do one right now. We'll do get-help. Hit enter, and it'll ask us, do you want to run update help? And we'll choose Y for yes. And we can see in this particular case, it's actually downloading information from Microsoft. So it's getting help, not necessarily what's already on the computer, but something out from the internet. So you want to make sure you have internet access if you're going to do the get help command. Now that the help files have been downloaded, we can use the get help on any particular commandlet that we might need. So if we scroll down, we can see we can type in things such as get help and then the search term. So let's type get help space remoting. So let's now type the command get dash help remoting. So that way we can find out about this particular command. So we can see we can disable PS remoting, enable, enable server manager, or disable server manager standard user. Now let's further drill down in and put in get dash help enable PS remoting. So we did get help remoting, and now we're doing the enable PS remoting command and we want some help on that. So you see it drills down into each one of these different commandlets. As I mentioned before, most of the commands start as an add or a get or a set. So let's use the help command to find out all the different commands that start with the word get and find out what they do. So we'll type get dash help space get dash star. And we see a lot of different commands that come up. And you can see a little bit of information about it. Let's go ahead and choose one of the get commands that's in the list. And we'll choose get dash disk and hit enter. And look at that. We see that this is a Microsoft virtual disk. So we're actually on a virtual machine. We see the health status is healthy. It's online. And it's a 60 gigabyte GPT type of partition. You'll also notice that although the commands show a capitalized version of get-disk, I was choosing to use the lowercase get-disk. And that's because the capitalization doesn't matter with the exception of if you're typing a password. So even though the list of help files shows everything capitalized, it's just a little bit easier to see what it is that you're doing if each word is capitalized. But you do not have to type it that way. 
we're going to go through a lot of the most popular types of PowerShell commandlets in this series. So stay tuned and we'll get started.